I'm Keisha Ariel and I am the founder of Here We Grow and today we are going to talk all about silicones. So with no further ado, let's jump right into it. So recently I did a video talking about mineral oils and if you have not yet seen that video then definitely check the cards above or check the description bar below where I will link that video for you to check out. However, after you know doing that video it had me thinking you know to dive a little bit deeper into what are silicones because I started to um, you know weigh the similarities between the two and I wanted to know whether or not they were indeed the same thing. So with that I would like to share my findings with you so that you yourself can also know the difference between mineral oils and silicones and whether or not you want to use these products on your hair. So let's jump right into what are silicones. So silicones are synthetic compounds derived from silicon, a chemical element abundant in the earth's crust. The most common types of silicones used in hair products are derived from silica or sand, which is processed to create various silicones such as dimethicone and cyclo cyclopenthesilozane. <laughs> That's cyclopenthesilozane, I think. These silicones have a unique molecular structure that contributes to their smoothing and protective properties in hair care products. Okay, so as we can see, silicones are synthetic compounds and synthetic compounds simply mean that these things were man-made and it was not something that was produced by nature. So it was created in a laboratory. So um, even though it says here that silicones um, are used for their smoothing and protective properties in hair care products, you have to wonder to yourself what are the drawbacks to using something that was man-made, something that is synthetic, something that doesn't happen or occur naturally in nature. Does this have any adverse effects on my hair or my body? So, you know, people often look at just the positive side of it, like, oh, you know, it smooths my hair, it protects my hair, etc but what can be on the other side of that and is that something you want to um, indulge in and have on your hair and possibly over time have some adverse effects. So with that let us take a look into the purpose of silicones in hair products. So in my notes I have here that silicones in hair products serve as conditioning agents providing a smooth texture, reducing frizz and enhancing shine. They create a protective layer around the hair shaft helping to prevent moisture loss and heat damage. However, some people avoid silicone due to concerns about product buildup because that is something that silicones can leave back on your hair buildup, um, which may require using clarifying shampoos to remove. Now, just like I had mentioned in my video on mineral oils, you do not want to um, use clarifying shampoo on your hair regularly because that will literally strip away your natural sebaceous oils, which is your sebum, which naturally keep your scalp moisturized and also keep your hair strands moisturized as well, hydrated and moisturized as, as well. So you definitely don't want to do that. Now that's a similarity between silicones and mineral oils. It would leave buildup. Now we do not use any silicones or mineral oils in our products, especially our hair and body butter. As you can see here, we have our winter spice hair and body butter. Now the main ingredient in this butter or the butters that we do produce is shea butter and that is the perfect alternative to silicone. It provides the same exact, um, it, it serves the same purpose as what silicones are used in these hair products. But the benefit to that is we are using natural, okay, natural, um, ingredients that is derived from nature. Nothing that has been um, processed in a laboratory and it's not any synthetic compounds and it does not leave 
any form of buildup on your hair. Okay, so now that we have spoken on how silicones benefit the hair in some degree, however, I personally do not advocate for using synthetic um, products on your hair and skin because personally, I do not use that for myself because I also understand how these things over time can have a negative effect on your hair and your body. So that is also why we do not use any synthetic products or ingredients should I say in our products we do not use any mineral oils neither do we use silicones now with that we are going to look at some of the adverse effects of using silicone so let me get my notes once again and we are going to discuss this further so what adverse effects are associated with silicones or synthetic compounds in products here hair and beauty products so some of the drawbacks could be buildup now i did mention that when i was doing my research i realized that there were a lot of similarities between mineral oils and silicones right and one of that one of them <laughs> is um buildup now silicones can accumulate on the hair over time leading to product buildup this may result in the hair feeling heavy or greasy and can af affect can affect the effectiveness okay can affect the effectiveness of other hair care products again that is a similarity with mineral oils it leaves the hair feeling heavy or greasy and this can also negatively impact the effectiveness of using other hair products on your hair so you're probably wondering why your hair is not coming out a particular way in comparison to somebody else using a certain product you have to look at your ingredients list like okay well what is in it is it mineral oils in there are there um, um, silicones in there are there other synthetic compounds that can negatively impact my hair as well as the results I'm looking for after using all these wonderful products on my hair so we have to look a bit more deeper into it and be more conscious of what we're putting on our hair so with that we're going to look at other adverse effects um, silicone products or synthetic compounds um, can have on the hair. So again, now we have difficulty in removal. We mentioned that earlier. So it says some silicones are not water soluble. So that means it, it won't um, dissolve in water. Okay. So it says some silicones are not water soluble, requiring sulfate based shampoos to effectively remove them. Regular use of sulfates, however, can strip the hair of natural oils and lead to dryness. Okay, again, talking about clarification, that will, clarifying shampoo, should I say, will um, strip away your hair, um, natural oils. I need to get my words out right. <laughs> it will strip away the natural oils from your hair and your scalp, leaving it feeling extremely dry. It can be difficult, so now you have to use sulfate-based shampoos, which is not good for our hair texture. Again, that will further dry out your hair, and you're wondering, why is my hair breaking all the time? Why are these routines or regimens that I'm following not working? because you are using products that is negatively impacting your hair without even knowing. So we have to be very careful, okay? We have to look at the products, um, the back, the ingredient list to see what is in there. Again, we mentioned, I mentioned the two main um, silicones used and that is dimethicone and cyclo, you know what I said earlier. <laughs> so, um, Yes, yeah, so using products that got silicones and mineral oils in there will cause you to experience these types of things. Again, another similarity. So all of these are all similarities thus far with mineral oils. So imagine using a product that have both in there. Oh my Lord. <laughs> No, I can't even think about it. Now, let's go into the next one, blocking moisture. Now, it says the protective layer created by silicones may also hinder moisture from penetrating the hair shaft. 
This can be an issue for individuals with dry or damaged hair who need more intensive hydration. Again, like I mentioned with mineral oils, they are so heavy and they are literally, you know, just closing the cuticle of your hair strands not allowing moisture to get in there again just like silicones it doesn't allow for moisture to get into your hair because of this protective barrier on top of it and some of these are not water soluble you know it is definitely um hindering moisture from getting into your hair and then on top of that you have to use sulfate based shampoos that's going to further dry out your hair this is not a good look However, using products like our hair and body butter that contains shea butter, which are natural um, occurring ingredients that nature produces naturally, these things will allow for a much more um, breathable you know, environment and it's lighter on your hair and it has so much benefits for your hair. Matter of fact, I am thinking to do, while I'm saying this, I'm thinking to do a video exclusively on shea butter so that you can understand how wonderful this ingredient is and why we use it in our products. Now, let me continue. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so it says the protective layer um, created by silicones may hinder moisture from penetrating the hair shaft. And for individuals, um, it says this can be an issue for individuals with dry or damaged hair who require intensive hydration. So if you have um, dry hair, so if you're dealing with a high porosity hair, so if you bleach your hair or color your hair often, you will need intensive hydration. So for you, you would definitely need to avoid sulfate based shampoos, etc. because that will further dry out your hair. Moving on. Um, it says the environmental impact, okay, that this have. Again, these are synthetic compounds. See, we are very aware of using natural products that naturally occur. So it, it's not taking up anything. Um, it's not going to impact the earth, the environment in a negative way. But um, let's look a bit further into how this can negatively impact the environment. So it says the production and disposal of silicone based products can have environmental implications. Silicones are not biodegradable. So therefore, you know how, for example, think about plastic. Plastic is not biodegradable. So therefore, if you put that in the earth and you come back 10 years later and pull it up, there it is right there, right? However, you can look at something like the shea nut, you know, if that goes into the earth, the most that will happen is another shade tree will grow. Shade tree, is that what it's called? I don't even know, I just said that. But another tree will grow in its place. It's gonna have a positive impact on the earth. So it says that um, they um, are not biodegradable and their residues may persist in the environment. Now I know I mentioned that from my personal research, I could see that silicones and mineral oils are very similar in the adverse effects that they have on the hair. I just want to let you guys know again that they are two completely different things, but they have similar um, implications on the hair. Now with that, I just want to clarify the differences between silicones and mineral oils. So hair, I have, okay. Silicones are synthetic compounds as we spoke about earlier, derived from silicon, and they are often used in hair products for their smoothing and conditioning properties. Okay, and again, common silicone derivatives include dimethicone and cyclopentacillosane. Mm, okay, and mineral oils, now these are derived from petroleum. Man, I'm telling you, these, these things are not meant to be in our hair products because we got petroleum. Again, if you have not seen the video on mineral oils, definitely check it out. We have petroleum, which is not good. It should not be ingested in our body, in our hair, our skin, etc. And then we have a synthetic compound that 
also have negative impacts on our hair and body. Nonetheless, so mineral oils are derived from petroleum and they are a type of hydrocarbon. Mineral oils are used in some hair and skincare products for the ability to lock in moisture and create a barrier on the skin or hair. So as we can see, both of these create a barrier. One claim it one's protective and the other one say it's a barrier to protect again um, but these things are blocking moisture from entering into our hair strands which needs moisture to thrive so with that specific adverse effects can vary depending on the formulation of products your particular hair type and how often you are using these products that contain silicones and or mineral oils because i know some people who are listening to this may not um find that they're experiencing these types of issues however please bear in mind that if you have high porosity hair so if you're dealing with um dry hair strands or your hair is bleached, you color your hair often, you are going to find that you may experience some of these adverse effects, especially where it comes to dryness. Now, where it comes to build up and, you know, moisture not getting into your hair, all of us could experience that. But we have to be very aware of what our hair needs so that we can know what products are ideal for us and what products we need to avoid. Now, if you are dealing with um, dry hair strands or colored hair, bleached hair, etc., you want to make sure that you're incorporating um, deep conditioning treatments, um, uh, maintaining a moisture routine, moisturizing routine, so that you can give your hair the hydration it needs and also to prevent your hair strands from breaking off etc so i hope you guys found this video very informative and helpful and if you did then definitely give me a big massive thumbs up leave me a comment let me know what are your thoughts and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and until the next video we will be right back here with another one